Good morning and, and good evening. Uh, welcome to day two of Open Networking and Edge Executive Forum. As we all know, this is three days, three time zones, three hours each. Uh, we borrowed this format from last year and it has been very, very successful. Uh, and, and so on day two, which is more of an APAC friendly time zone, uh, we'd like to welcome you know, our colleagues from, from Asia pretty much to that who are joining. Before we get started, uh, there's a couple of housekeeping uh, things I wanna go over. Uh, we have to abide by the code of conduct. There's a Q and A box in the webinar that you can ask questions to the speakers. All the speakers are live. So they will be able to answer the questions as we go through it. If there's a question on joining or sound or anything, then you just send it to events at lfnetworking.org. We will be recording this and you can go through it again. And no content is repeated. We had a great session yesterday, which was more on the North America time zone. Um, and we had some great presentations and great announcements. And today we're looking forward to even more of the thought leadership that uh, you all provide uh, as, as, as the keynotes. All right, so I'm gonna take about 15 minutes to walk you through the state of open networking and edge uh, as we see it uh, from, from, from a, a neutral perspective. And I'm gonna cover what's the buzz in the open source ecosystem. What's the main thing? What are people talking about? And people are talking about three things, security, re-aggregation. So if you remember disaggregation, which is separation, re-aggregation is bringing together. And then they're talking about next big thing. So I'll cover all three. Open source security is extremely important. And I want to start off with a survey that our research team did, which is LF wide. And I know you cannot read this, but please download the research from linuxfoundation.org. And what this survey is basically saying, 98% of the enterprises and end users use open source. 95% are concerned about security and only half of them are using what is called SBOMs or software build of materials. Basically understanding where software is coming from. So there's a tremendous opportunity for us to lead this security initiative. And we also did research with the Harvard University and OpenSSF, which are very important organizations. And again, you cannot see these infographics, but please download the research. The main feedback from this research was entire software development cycle is important. Not just the vulnerability and CVE management, packaging and integration is also important. And for each market, there are specific critical projects that are important that needs to be uh, secure, okay? So that's kind of the Linux Foundation research that has come up with what is important for security. The actions we are taking as Linux Foundation are in six categories. One, we want to secure 200 of the most critical components. Now for networking and edge, there's not 200, but we will identify the most critical components, right? Whether it's you know, open daylight or ONAP or, or, or sort of DPDK or, or things that could break the connectivity. We have to automate tooling. We have to make sure that the engineers are trained. We have to make sure that as you go through developer, through packaging, building packaging, and you 
pull in the dependencies, you can track where the code is coming from. And this is very, very critical. So we are looking at security from a holistic perspective. And LF networking and LF edge are leading examples of projects and umbrellas that are on the forefront of open source security for the Linux Foundation. So under our platform tool called LFX, and you can go to the link, we know exactly how these projects are progressing towards security and security best practices, okay? So very, very important for 2022. And in light of that, we just released yesterday a new white paper from LFN called Open Source Security, um, you know, for Open Source Security, which has architectures, best practices, frameworks, how do you track, manage vulnerabilities, how do you get to S bombs, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're not already participating, please do so in work groups, task force, subcommittees, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that's bullet number one. Bullet number two, re-aggregation. So meaning bringing together, right? Disaggregation, if you remember 10 years ago, SDN, separating control plane from data plane or hardware from software, right? That was kind of disaggregation. Now the re-aggregation is for communities. So bringing communities together, bringing organizations together, specifically SDOs, standards organizations, alliances, et cetera, and bringing projects together. And that's what we are seeing as priority in 2022. So let me go through each of these. But before I go into the re-aggregation, uh, there is money and economics tied to this. And if you look at this diagram from NFX, software and community building are rising to the top in terms of creativity and money. And that's what we do at the Linux Foundation. And that's what all you all do to participate and help software design and building open source communities. So I just thought this was very interesting and the power of collaboration, which is very important to bring the global developers together. And I'm pleased to report that some of the key momentum on some of these projects have been out of the charts, right? Like almost triple digit growth over the five to 10 years, like DPDK is 10 years. So that's a long project, but LF networking, Dent, Oran, uh, Magma, which is the packet core edge, everything has grown uh, as, as more and more engineers collaborate. We also want to re-aggregate or bring together standards, alliances, and open source foundations. And I'm pleased to report that almost all of these uh, foundations, whether it's CNCF, ORAN, LF Edge, LFN, LF Energy, or op OpenStack, Open Infrastructure, uh, Eclipse, uh, all of those have been very well uh, working with uh, Linux Foundation. All of the standards, right? GSMA, Etsy, 3GPP, ORAN Alliance, et cetera, et cetera, working very closely. Uh, and then obviously the alliances on the edge side, uh, very closely with uh, Linux Foundation. So the, the coming together of open source and open standards is, a, is making good progress. And then the final re-aggregation is on projects. And that is what we are calling 5G super blueprints under LF networking. So if someone like an end user, like a US government or a carrier, says, I want to build everything core to edge based on open source projects. How do I do it? Here's a blueprint. Here's an example, right? From management to core to edge to all the way to an art, uh, art host that goes like a Zephyr that goes inside a constraint edge device. As an example, the Blueprint community has been making very good progress to integrate multiple projects across the spectrum. And I'll give you an example of these projects, right? We have ONAP and Open Daylight Integration Complete, ONAP and Magma, Emco and Magma, ONAP, Anuket, 
et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so these blueprints will be uh, making it very easy for end users to deploy, uh, commercially deploy these multiple open source projects. Um, now, obviously vendors will harden it and support it, but we are seeing a good traction of pre-integration and re-aggregation. So we announced um, the, re the momentum on that, including the white paper, including these projects, as well as some new members that are very excited about the blueprints. Okay, so that was kind of the announcement uh, late yesterday. There was also another announcement on a new project called Nephew, um, which was kind of led by Google Cloud here. Um, and what it intends to do is to bring automation to telecom network functions. And it's kind of sitting one layer below uh, ONAP and EMCO, uh, mostly extending the Kubernetes CRDs into an automated function. So we have been working closely with them to make sure that uh, there is there's complementary uh, uh, architectures and, and there's no overlaps between any of these projects. And so here's a whole list of companies that, that want to participate. Uh, it is not, it is directly under the LF. It is not, um, it's not a funded project, but Google is subsidizing the, the first year. So we just want, it's a technical project only. Okay. All right. And then in the final um, uh, set, I want to highlight what's new and what's big. Before we go into what's next, we have to appreciate where we have come from. And so if you look at just one the past year in America's huge headlines, right? On open source, huge headline on ORAN, huge headlines on edge. Um, and, and, and vendors, you know, jumping in to move towards helping the carriers. Uh, so again, and, and we know that, you know, US has been a great proponent and supporter of open source uh, development. And, you know, here are some examples. We look at APAC, same thing, right? I mean, we are adding subscribers. We are looking at, uh, you all are looking at a huge, you know, um, uh, forward-looking thing in terms of open source. Uh, some of the coverage has been very, very good uh, on, on 5G, uh, clearly ahead of the curve uh, compared to the rest of the world. So congratulations on that. If you look at EMEA, uh, they have also caught up very well in terms of deployment. You know, Orange has deployed several of the open source projects. Deutsche Telekom has hit, uh, deploy, um, you know, all the telco clouds. Uh, Ericsson, Nokia, et cetera, et cetera. So Europe is also going very well from an open source perspective. And so from our perspective, you know, this is where we, how far we have come, right? In terms of 5G, cloud native, open source. So where are we heading next? We're heading into a couple of areas that still need some work on open. The first area is what we're calling NOSIS or network operating system. So if you take a standard uh, disaggregated hardware switch, what network operating system, you know, kernel, NAS, you, do you run on it, right? So we have projects like Dot, Dent, Sonic, et cetera, that are still trying to solve one or two use cases. So that, that work is going on there. And then the other big work that's going on in open source communities, obviously on the ORAN. Um, you know, portions of ORAN are open, a lot of other portions are not. Uh, how do you make sure that uh, the, the differentiation of vendors on top align with the standards and specification of ORAN? So those are the two big uh, discussion points that are in 2022 important. And then of course, 6G. I don't have to tell you what 6G is. You all are experts here. Um, whether it's capacity, data rates, latency, et cetera. A lot of great use cases have come up and I think we are in the early phase of 6G. Um, I also found that some of the uh, uh, IMT 2030 vision promotion groups have a lot of interesting use cases that we have not seen yet on the global front that have been identified as well as candidates for, for technology. So these are our early phases, I would say for, for 6G. And then on the edge side of things, um, 
it is very important that we understand that the so so I know you can't see this, but this is a McKinsey study which shows digital transformation of sectors or vertical industries. And on the top is ICT, media, finance, whole trade, manufacturing, oil and gas. And at the bottom, agriculture, construction, healthcare, et cetera. And what green means is they are going through digital transformation very, very quickly. Red is they have some concerns, right? And what we are finding is verticals with a higher layer of level of digital transformations are taking advantage of edge compute and vice versa. Because edge compute is available closer to the uh, uh, vertical industries and the factories and, and sort of manufacturing plants, they can go and do digital transformation much faster. So we're seeing a very good correlation between edge computing and digital transformation, which I thought was very interesting for 2020. Because if you look at how LF Edge is doing, it has prioritized these markets, industrial energy, commerce, uh, uh, automotive fleet, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for, uh, for, for LF Edge. And so that's kind of very interesting. All right, so as I wrap up, Call to action, um, please ask questions. Uh, we have uh, you know, a live audience and a live Q&A. We will be able to answer questions. Uh, stay tuned for some amazing presentations. And of course, take a look at and join these communities. By the way, LF Networking just has a brand new web page. The team has done a great job refreshing it. So take, it, take advantage of that. And with that said, welcome to Onif. And here's our speaker. So I am going to uh, introduce our first speaker.